Okay. We are on. Uh, welcome to everyone. Hello. Uh, I will do our, our group presentation. Uh, is a group of young researchers created in January 2020 around comparative and transdisciplinary studies on the penitentiary prisons and colonies in Latin America and the Caribbean. The group brings together Brazilian and French researchers and visas for the construction of an international and transdisciplinary network. The group's methodological access are organized into two fields of study, criminal and criminal studies and colonial and colonial studies. We read it on both canonical texts by Michel Foucault and Irving Goffman and a contemporary epistemology based on the spatial and environmental studies of imprisonment and colonization, as well as on a global and connected history. It is, therefore, intended to house an analysis not only of social sciences and history, but also of literature, geography, anthropology, law, and architecture. Uh, we like to welcome today to discuss with us about uh, border issues, necropolitics, Catherine Benoit. Dirceu, uh, you can uh, introduce our guest, I think. Uh, that's it. It's, it's Samuel, in fact. Samuel. <laughs> Samuel. <laughs> oh. We have a problem, we lost Samuel. <laughs> 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 he ran away for <laughs> from his his uh, from the, from his work. Uh, we we wait a second until Samuel is back. Until there we I I can introduce myself to Catherine because we we don't know each other. <laughs> It's our first. Uh, uh, hello, I'm very, I'm very shameful because. <laughs> I, no I, problem, no problem, Samuel. No I want problem. you to go no back on. I want you to go back on the window, and I. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and and uh, hello, I'm very, I'm very shameful because. Sorry. I, no problem, no problem, Samuel. I want no you to go no back on. I want There's a window open in your computer, I, I think. Somewhere. Yes, yes, because I want you to close the YouTube window to not to have an echo, and I closed the, the, the talk window, so I'm, so I'm very sorry for that. And uh, so, so we are very pleased after this <laughs> little messy introduction to, to welcome to Catherine Benoit, uh, who is a professor of anthropology in the Connecticut College. Uh, and uh, with in a, in a, a long-term research, uh, uh, a very good expert of the Caribbean zone, uh, with two main subjects of of, uh, of analysis. Firstly, she 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 worked about uh, uh, Creole gardens and and uh, some uh, anthropology of of, of uh, the na nature and, and and the gardens in, in the Caribbean, and mainly in the. French West Indies, and she reoriented her research uh, about um, uh, the uh, now the migrations and, 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 and more especially the immobilities in the Caribbean uh, zone. And she she is very interested also in in over overseas uh, territories like uh, Gu uh, French Guiana and Mayotte, which uh, focused our, our research uh, for now. And she's going to to present us uh, the results of a, of a long term work about uh, uh, what's called necropolitics, and she's going to 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 introduce more about uh, this concept to to our group and 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 the and the public, and 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 the migration uh, politics in uh, in the French borders uh, in the in the overseas. Um, some informations for the for for our public. You can uh, chat uh, on on YouTube, uh, asking questions. They are appearing in the screen. And Catherine asked us, and it's a good idea to, to
to present everyone in the chat. Uh, everyone who, who is present can 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 have a little chat and, and give his name and and his uh, encouragement to to, to Catherine, <laughs> who is going to 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 share us uh, uh, so so interesting work. So so thank you, Catherine. It's a very important moment for us and and. and for for everyone, I think, and the and the lecture, the, the lecture of, of your articles was yet a, a rich experience to, to us. So thank you, and and uh, I, I I wish to everyone a very good uh, moment uh, between us. And so Catherine is going to speak like half an hour, or maybe more, and we are going to have a, a free talk together and with uh, the public uh, uh, questions also. So. Uh, it's it's your it's your moment, Catherine. Thank you. <laughs> My moment. Uh, thank you, Samuel, for this very generous uh, introduction, and thanks to all the Copark uh, fellows for this invitation. Uh, as Samuel said, uh, I'd like those of you who are in the audience to just mention your name uh, in the private chat, uh, just to see who is. Uh, attending as you know I could change a few things during the talk based on who is here it's very um, it's not intimidating but it's kind of strange uh, you know to speak in front of a screen and wondering if there are only three people listening or <laughs> many more and where they are from and who finally uh, made it um, so I would like to um, start with um, the title of this talk uh, French necropolitics in um, in the far-flung borderlands of French Guyana and Mayotte. Um, could we have the the title, Diaseu? Um, the yes, you're, you 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 need to. Open I thought, your, ah, okay. Your I thought it was open. What's going on? Let me see. I'll open it. Here it is. Do you want the slide ah, well. mode? Maybe. Um, yeah, presentation, slide presentation. Yeah, yeah perfect. OK, perfect. so um, all right. Let me see. It does not show up on my second screen yet. But everybody knows about um, the title. So necropolitics is in reference of Mambe theory on sovereignty. Uh, and I will come back to it uh, later. And why French Guiana and Mayotte? Um, you know, as many of you are anthropologists, you know that you know, anthropologists tend to focus on one uh, specific uh, region, if not place. Uh, in this case, it's not just about, you know, um, it's not just about a multi sided, um, a multi -sided uh, ethnographic fieldwork, but it's I want to argue in this talk that there is a historical, legal, and anthropological continuity between these two overseas territories, and continuity which I conceptualize as the spatialization of law, spatialization du droit, that translates into a deportation regime. Um, deportation in English refers to reconduite à la frontière in French, but uh, this is the dedicated, dedicated terms when in French uh, deportation has you know a different historical meaning, but I keep it since I speak in English. And so this specialization of law translates into a deportation regime and the mass illegality of migrants, travelers, and people on the move. And perhaps we'll talk about these categorizations of people on the move as migrants, immigrants, travelers, vagabonds, uh, refugees, and for the French now, uh, exiles, uh, precisely to go beyond this uh, classification. So by specialization of law, I mean, the territorial inscription of the immigration laws as implemented in the French overseas territories versus the Spanish and Portuguese uh, overseas territories, um, and also specialization of the law um, among the various overseas lands themselves. Um, and um, the continuing expansion of derogation from one territory to another one over time. 
uh, as Samuel mentioned, um, you know, my initial work, and actually I'm continuing, uh, was about gardens and um, landscape. And I'm used to draw maps and to have space as a fundamental uh, entry uh, to look at any uh, questions I'm um, uh, developing. And so uh, in the case of the specialization of, um, of the law in the overseas territories, um, you know, I will argue that, um, um, no, I, I said what I'm going to argue about, sorry, um, but that this uh, territorial inscription uh, is made of land zones where identity checks can be performed, uh, patrol zones, detention centers, and roadblocks. Uh, and I will talk about that uh, later during this talk. So um, last point uh, for, this, for this introduction is that this historical continuity that I see from the Caribbean to the Indian Ocean uh, led me to consider that the far-flung borderlands of the EU um, are not so much the Mediterranean and the Eastern Europe uh, than they are um, the Caribbean and Indian Ocean uh, regions. And for this reason, I conceptualize them in a number of publications as the ultimate border of Europe. So my plan is really to uh, develop you know, this argument in three points. Uh, I will talk first about the production of mass illegality, uh, then the deportation regime, and it's another reason why uh, I keep, you know, the, the term deportation, and then um, the border spectacle that we can see being performed uh, on this flyer, and I'll come back to it uh, at the end of this talk. So the production of mass illegality, um, I would like to start, uh, since I don't know who is in the audience, with a brief historical overview of immigration law in the overseas territories. So immigration law in France starts with, I mean, started with um, the November 2nd, 1945 uh, ordinance on the entry and stay of foreigners. Um, and despite, you know, the fact, I mean, the, the departments, the former uh, colonies became departments in 46 and May of 2011, as you know, um, despite uh, the fact that the overseas colonies became departments, um, it was not until 1980 that um, the immigration laws in the overseas departments became governed uh, by this ordinance. Up to 1980, they were governed by colonial decrees that were uh, passed in the 30s. Um, so since 1980, with the inclusion of the overseas territories in the national law, in the continental law, uh, specific legal provisions um, have been voted by the National Assembly uh, for the overseas territories. And all these legal provisions lead to the application of a more coercive uh, laws and policies. Um, there are more restrictive conditions for the entry, transit, and stay of foreigners, and we could get in the details uh, later if needed. Uh, there are extended identity checks. Um, we'll talk about this later as well. Uh, it's much more, it's easier and more rapid to implement uh, deportations. And to go back to um, the concept of um, the specialization of law, um, I would like to say how these laws have been uh, passed, I mean, not the laws themselves, but these legal provisions from one territory to the next one over time. And each time um, the start has temporary legal provisions that are renewed for a period of five years, and then they become, uh, you know, part of the law. So uh, it all started with St. Martin and French Guyana in 98. And this is how, this is when I started to come to French uh, Guyana, actually. So quite a long time ago. Uh, then Mayotte and Guadeloupe in 2005, and finally Martinique in 2016. And I will not be surprised that, you know, La Réunion will be next at some point. 
Um, and all of that, despite, you know, in the case of Martinique and Guadeloupe, a very tiny percentage of foreigners, which is below um, the percentage of foreigners in the French population. That's not the case of, you know, French Guiana and Yacht, as we will see, but at least this is the case of Guadeloupe and Martinique. Um, for the overview of the immigration law, I also want to mention that the Schengen Convention does not apply to the overseas territories, which is not the case of um, the Spanish Canary Islands and the Portuguese uh, Asori Islands and Madeira. So basically it means that uh, with a short-term uh, visa, foreigners cannot um, travel from an overseas department to, to France. Um, so, in 2005, um, a new immigration law was passed, which is called CESEDA, Code de l'entrée du séjour des étrangers et du droit d'asile, which has been modified more than 10 times uh, since. And it's applicable to Mayotte in 2015. Mayotte became a French uh, department in 2011 and only complied with um, you know, the European laws in 2015. But all, um, all these uh, specific provisions uh, are really derogations to, uh, to the main uh, law for continental France. Some activists consider them as exceptions. Uh, I will disagree with that because, uh, you know, they are part of the law. They are exceptions in a sense um, proposed by Agamben. Uh, meaning that, you know, some temporary um, provisions of the law can become definitive, but other than that, they are part of the law. Um, so, in this context of all these restrictive um, um, provisions and also uh, coercive policies, as we are going to see, um, there is a high percentage of foreigners who are undocumented. Uh, undocumented migrants constitute 35% uh, of the foreign population in Mayotte uh, and 20% of the foreign population in French Guiana. So, um, how does this translate uh, into um, the everyday life? Uh, I would like um, to uh, start with the deportation uh, regime. Um, so the deportation regime refers to uh, a concept that was developed by Nicolas de Genova, uh, who is a scholar at, uh, in Texas, and Nathalie Peut, quite a while ago. And the deportation regime um, is made of mechanism for excluding and removing uh, unwanted population. I will start with uh, a quote um, um, by one of my interlocutors in Saint Laurent du Maroni, uh, who is of uh, Juca origin. And here is what he says. Before I turned 18 in 95, so quite, you know, 25 years ago, the military did not pay attention to me. At the time, it was the military and not the border patrol that checked people's IDs. They used to break the doors at 5 a.m., dazzle people with a torch, and take the undocumented ones to the police station. When I turn 18, they always ask for my paper when I walk in the streets with my friends. They took us in a minivan to check our ID at the police station and then deported us to Albina, which is the town across uh, Saint Laurent du Maroni in. Um, uh, in Suriname, and as you can see here, you know, Suriname is very close, for those of you who don't know French Guiana, uh, to uh, the banks of the, Mor the Maroni River in uh, French Guiana. So at the police station in Suriname, they check the criminal database, and if you're not wanted, they ask you to clean the dishes or rake the lawn before being liberated. The border patrol officers knew me so well that they used to come along and say, good morning, Mr. Danik, this is the name I gave him. Why don't you come with us? At the police station, you do the, the paperwork on a form that mentions the time of the arrest, and then you are deported. Once they left me alone in the minivan to run after another guy, I asked myself, what would they do if I were to run? Well, I stayed, and they came back much later with a guy. 
Another time, they got too many guys at the same time. The minivan was overloaded. So they asked me to leave, which I did. But as I walk in the street, they called me to catch me again and release someone else instead. There were times when I was deported once a week. And we know of lawsuits by a lawyer who was uh, in front of Guyana at the time in the 90s, who, uh, who used to file lawsuits for French citizens being uh, deported over the weekend and sometimes twice, twice over the weekend, just to talk about you know, how does this mass illegality uh, and deportation regime uh, translates into everyday life. So Danny continues by saying, one year I got in the eastern part of French Guyana, so I had to go through the Rakubo checkpoints, which I will show you pictures of later. Uh, one of my father's truck driver, Franz, who crosses a checkpoint every day, offered to take me with him. He gave me the idea of a friend who was driving a car behind. The police knew him well and did not ask for my ID. And when he said that the car behind was a friend's car, they did not check either. I stayed in the job for over a year. So on the other, you know, on the western part of, on the eastern part of French Guiana. Since I was getting depressed to be so far away from my family, my sister came and hid me in the truck under a number of bags. Of bags, yes. Uh, we made it back without being controlled. They seem to be aware that I filled a visa application. They do not stop me any longer. They also come to Mana, which is uh, a town one hour north to Saint Laurent, where the Maroons have their provision grounds. My mother lives there. We hide in the forest, but the police gets into the forest as well early in the morning. So what Adanik is describing, this is police harassment. Uh, um, you know, anybody who lives in, uh, in Saint Laurent du Marne and uh, Saint Georges, uh, can witness this, uh, this arrestation and even this collective arrestation since they deport people, um, you know, by groups of 10, 20, 30, depending on, um, the quotas to be met. So, um, as for the deportation regime, I'd like to show the next slide. Uh, which take us to uh, Dirceu, if you can show the next slide. Oh, in fact, you you have to pass to the next slide in your... Ah, account, I control the presentation myself? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so, um, but I think there are like two seconds between what I do and how it shows up on the... Uh, yeah, uh, on the screen. So you will see a map of um, the Comoros Island. How come it's not? Okay. Uh, with, uh, you know, something, the Comoros Islands, uh, following the referendum um, in uh, early 70s, uh, when uh, Mayotte decided um, to stay French while the three other islands uh, were against becoming French. The French government um, did not um, did not respect um, the very fact that the borders cannot be split uh, when um, during decolonization. Uh, the intangibility of borders has to be respected. So either the four islands should have become independent or they should have stayed France, uh, French. And for this reason, um, the United Nations is uh, blaming France every year. I mean, it stopped since 2011 for not having respected international, decolon <laughs> international conventions, sorry. Um, regarding um, the process of decolonization and the intangibility of borders. So, um, uh, Comorians um, um, who reach Mayotte um, live from uh, Anjouan and it's uh, 50 miles crossing uh, over there in the northern part of the Mozambique Channel. Um, though it's very short, uh, a number of people have died since, uh, since 1995. So even um, the residents of uh, Dazidja, which is the French, and uh, uh, whose French name is Grand Comor, um, they cross first uh, to uh, Anjouan Moeli, where the, the Comorian um, uh, 
police patrol does not operate. And from Moeli, they go to Anjouan and then they try a uh, crossing. Um, so the independence of uh, 1974, in 95, in order to prevent the circulation of uh, people from the so-called Comorian Islands uh, to Mayotte. For sure, the Comorians consider that Mayotte is, uh, is Comorian. Um, the French government uh, instituted the, what came to be called the Visa Balladur, uh, the death visa. And here is a road sign um, of the committee uh, in, uh, in Anjouan, Zouani. Um, contesting precisely uh, the visa. And because of the visa, which is rarely um, provided to um, the Comorians who request it, uh, um, between 12,000 and 50,000, I know it's, a, it's not the same number, but uh, there are no precise numbers, between 12,000 um, uh, 12, and 50,000 Comorians died uh, in the northern uh, Mozambique Channel. Uh, and they died because uh, deterrence policies, meaning you know, border patrols don't prevent uh, people to travel or to, or to migrate. I mean, Comorians don't migrate to, um, to, um, to Mayotte. They do travel to Mayotte, and they may want to get to Mayotte for family reunions, for a doctor's appointment, you know, whatever. Um, and we could say the same, maybe in the discussion, uh, in regards to uh, French Guyana. Not everybody is a migrant, but everybody becomes an undocumented migrant uh, due to lack of documentation. So people die because they take uh, more and more dangerous uh, roads to get to the island, and also because of um, the French border patrol's techniques uh, to uh, push um, the Kwasa Kwasa, the boats, back to um, to the Comorian Islands. And uh, even the rescue patrols don't seem to rescue people so often. A number of lawsuits have been conducted on, uh, on all the shipwrecks as well. So um, this is, you know, what... Um, this is how uh, this um, immigration laws, these specific um, provisions translate uh, into the life of, uh, of foreigners, both in French Guiana and in, um, in uh, Mayotte. So um, the deportation regimes um, take different shapes. It's not just about you know, the borders, uh, on the geopolitical borders, uh, but it's about displacing um, the borders or implementing um, IDs, identity checks uh, in the territories. So in French Guiana, for example, um, there are two um, uh, police checkpoints uh, on the national road between saint georges de loyapoc and Saint-Laurent-du-Maroni. This is the one of Hirakubo. Uh, that some of you may know uh, here or closer photographs uh, here as well. So um, the controls are really done um, in uh, along racial lines. Actually, I've never I've never been asked my ID only once, and I had my New York driver's license. And, you know that was not a problem when they should have asked me about my uh, passport and so on. And even once when I traveled with a Guadeloupean historian, he was ready to show his uh, identity card as a public servant. You know, and he was absolutely outraged and and felt humiliated to be asked you know more papers um like his um id card when i was not asked anything so it's about racial profiling here this is the one in regina um that was in belizon uh, before and you know this one is also to prevent um, like the Irakubo one, one of the consequences uh, of this checkpoint is that uh, foreigners who are in need of uh, healthcare in Cayenne uh, cannot go through the checkpoints if they don't have an authorization. At this point, I don't know if it has to come from um, 
the um, um, Agence Régionale de la Santé, Regional Health uh, Agency of um, um, the Prefect. But anyway, it's one way to, um, you know, to prevent foreigners and even ambulances and even when doctors are with their patients uh, to get to uh, to Cayenne. Um, the main reason, I mean, being a terrorism. <laughs> we were told, or, you know, drug trafficking. And actually, like for all deterrence policies, uh, if you're in good health, you can always go across. You know, you take a boat um, in Irakubo, on the river. Um, in this case, you go through the forest. So that will lead me to talk about the border spectacle. You know, what the point of all these uh, performances of, uh, of border control. Um, so um, among you know, the, the uh, specific provisions, um, you have um, the lack of suspensory appeal when uh, someone is deported in the overseas territories. In France, a person who is being deported can appeal the decision to a judge, which is not the case uh, here, unless this person has a lawyer who does a referee in one day, uh, you know, following, in less than one day following uh, the arrest. Uh, and um, between uh, this um, I'm looking at something I forgot to mention, um, and between um, the lack of suspensory appeal, the block zones, uh, we can um, draw um, maps where um, all these policies and legal provisions uh, can be shown. Uh, starting in uh, uh, 97 in French Guiana first, um, there were specific provisions in the law uh, regarding zones that you see in grey here along the, um, I keep saying Moroni because I work on the Comoros right now, but the Maroni River uh, and the Oyapok uh, River zones where uh, identity checks can be performed without uh, foreigners committing a a crime. So it started in 97 um, in French Guiana. And then um, I'm looking at my notes here. I think it was uh, 2005, yes, in Guadeloupe and Mayotte. Uh, and uh, no, in Guadeloupe, uh, sorry, San Martin uh, and Saint Bart, and 2011 in Mayotte. So there are these zones, um, 2016 actually, in, um, in uh, Martinique. So in these zones, um, IDs check can be performed, and it does seem to be like very narrow. Actually, for those of you who know French Guiana, um, they do fit to all the um, inhabited zones. You know, um, there is no need of this. There is no need of these zones in the interior uh, of the territory. So basically, everybody can be checked. So this zone, then um, the road uh, block, Siracubo, at the time of the drawing of the map, it was Belizon, but now uh, this is uh, Regina a little bit, uh, you know, further um, east. Then the different um, detention centers and um, detention um, bureaus, uh, which are less important in terms of the number of people who can be, um, who can, the number of foreigners who can stay there, and uh, the legislation is, you know, it's just slightly different. So the main, uh, the only detention center in, uh, in Cayenne, in Rochambeau, and then um, the, uh, retention offices in uh, Saint Laurent and in uh, in Saint Georges. So, um, as a result, the number uh, of deportations uh, in the overseas uh, territories 
are between one and half to three times uh, the number of deportations in continental France. Well, you know, there is no uh, relationship between uh, the demographics in the overseas departments and France. So we can really talk about the deportation regime. And the first time I came to French Guiana in 98, the number of deportations in French Guiana, 15,000 at the time was the equivalent of the number of deportations of um, um, in continental France. Um, there were twice deportations in Mayotte uh, in 2016 than they were in France. Um, another specificity of these deportations is the fact that they concern children. You know, in the US, everybody is rightly horrified by the kids which are in cages um, at the Mexican border. But in Mayotte, we do something quite close, and it's not 400, 500 kids as, in, uh, as on the Mexican border, but 5,000 children or minors uh, are being deported uh, every year from, uh, from Mayotte. Uh, and they are deported without their parents. Uh, they are, it's why I say we can compare with the Mexican border. No minors can, can be deported on their own. So the French border uh, patrol just affiliate all these kids with, you know, adults in the detention center. And so it's about, you know, uh, it, the production by the border patrol, so by the French uh, police of uh, illegal documents and fake documents, basically. Um, then these deportations uh, can be performed very quickly, uh, a few hours in French Guiana and Mayotte, when it's an average of 10 days uh, in France because of the appeals and, uh, and so on. To a point that I think we can you know, consider these detention centers as stateless spaces, and for good reasons. First, they are far from uh, continental France, so there is no way uh, for, though it's changing from uh, continental activist organizations to be, uh, to witness what's uh, happening. Um, and uh, then um, the police is not under the scrutiny in the same way as it is in uh, metropolitan France. And when you interview the border patrols, as I did, uh, you get a sense of um, how what they are able to do uh, to meet uh, the quota uh, when the quota existed under uh, President Sarkozy. And at the same time, these guys are absolutely depressed because uh, they realize that what they are doing is absolutely vain. Um, you know, a number of uh, people who are depart deported just come back uh, in the following hours or in the following days. Um, and I will quote one of these border patrols, but I would like to show also just it just you know the the military police in uh, in uh, in Saint Georges de Loya Park. But I like this picture because uh, here you have a restaurant and this is the city hall. And if you sit in this uh, restaurant, um, you can witness how every ten minutes there is the military uh, police, there is a military, there is a national police, and there is a Légion étrangère that just take turns in this very uh, little town so that we can talk with Rosas um, of a low intensity warfare. Um, today, uh, Brazilians who live across uh, Saint George de Loria Park have a transnational circul circulation ID uh, to cross the Oya Park River, but they cannot go very far. They can only stay in downtown, if we can put it this way, uh, Saint George, uh, to do some errands and nothing more. When many of them have their gardens, their provision grounds outside uh, the limits of uh, of the town. So it's just you know about consuming, as the border patrol says. You know, we want to sell them whiskey, and that's about it. So a border patrol in um, in Saint Laurent de Maroni uh, talked to me in this way. It's cool to be in French Guiana if you want to experience the Amazon forest, 
Otherwise, the life of a border patrol officer is absolutely stupid. This year, and this was in 2013, the goal is to catch 3,600 uh, people, so 3,600. It was the rule, this guy retired, it was the rule to leave work early. We will start at 6 a.m., stop the hunt, you know, he's using this word, chassis, stop the hunt at 10 a.m., then focus on the paperwork till 11.30. Then at noon, goodbye everyone. Since we do not get paid for overtime work any longer, we try to speed up our work. We target men who are 45 years older and the mama who sell cigarettes and onions in the streets. Before, we looked only for the men because the kids were in school. Uh, so we had to leave the mothers uh, in the town. This was morally more acceptable. Now, in the detention centers, you find gray hair seniors. We drive also one hour north to Mana, looking for the Saramaca Maroons in their provision grounds. And this was confirmed by um, this man of um, Juca uh, origin. We send the Surinamese to Albina across the river. The cost is four bucks, four dollars for each deportee. It's quite good to escort deportees abroad. Frequent flyer miles add up. For the Peruvians, we usually fly from Cayenne, Paris, Madrid, Lima, with Air France and Iberia. Once, I did the routing from Cayenne, Martinique, Santo Domingo, Panama, Lima. When we spend nights in the Best Western and buy a last-minute ticket, this costs 13000 on the budget of the prefecture, $13,000, which is like um, 11,000 euros. When Chinese are caught, if we can prove that they came from Suriname, we give them back to Albina. If we send them back via Paris, we need a pass from China to accept them. So we go to the Chinese consulate in Paris, where they say that this guy is not Chinese, that Cayenne did a bad job. Unfortunately, the French Republic is giving up now. We release the guy in Paris, and he hangs out undocumented in France. Same, same thing with the English Guyanese. Guyana, and he speaks like President Trump, is a shitty little country. Not even a million people. We have no readmission agreement to send them back directly. And this country does not accept any deportees. Before, we used to go to Barbados with the Guyanese to read his name. Those with a passport could continue on their own. So actually, the life of a border patrol is about you know, um, flying the world, but now they cannot use their frequent flyer miles. I was told last time uh, in French Guyana. Um, so. Let's see um, this how the map, the specialization of flow translates in um, in Mayotte, and this is a map before the departmentalization. I've been asking this the geographers who drew the maps to update them, but this is not done yet. Um, so there are constant um, ID checks. The entire island is, you know, can be. Uh, check um, for whatever uh, reasons. Uh, this uh, triangle refers to the radars. Um, those are all the um, boats, the navets, the police navets that patrol uh, the Indian Ocean. And I want to mention that uh, in the case of Guadeloupe and French Guiana, in 2005, um, the presidents of the department councils offer and the French government to buy, um, you know, such um, police um, <coughs> patrol boats, at least for Guadeloupe, now I'm not sure for French Guiana, um, to prevent Haitians coming from Dominica to reach the coast of Guadeloupe. So what we see happening in the territory, actually, when we have a general overview of the territories, um, you know, is just applicable everywhere. And again, it starts in one territory, moves to another one, uh, and so on. And this, um, this uh, blue, um, this blue uh, um, represents um, the coral reefs, and this is why coming to Mayotte uh, can be uh, so unsafe. 
uh, and now the police and the border patrol, um, you know, know where um, the boats could try coming in and they just stop to push them back to um, the Comorian Islands. And even during um, the confinement, you know, they were pushing people back to um, the Comorian and um, the Comoros Islands. So, um, I would like to, uh, what time is it? Okay, to move to the border spectacle. Um, and the flyer is a good example of the border spectacle. So border spectacle uh, comes from, you know, Guy Debord Société uh, Spectacle and was conceptualized by the Genova, again, as a framework for analyzing the political and economic issues at stake in choreographed interactions on the part of the police patrols in the course of identity checks, arrests, and deportations. Um, in this case, it's about um, um, uh, it's about the control uh, in Saint Laurent du Maroni of uh, Surinamese coming from Suriname, uh, obviously by um, the military, by municipal uh, officers, uh, policier municipal, by the border patrol, by the custom uh, officers. So um, they were looking for undocumented people, and you can find the picture on the website of the. Uh, French Guyanese National Police, and thank you to uh, the Kupalk uh, fellows for finding these pictures. We had a discussion about, you know, regarding uh, photographs in Mayotte and, and this one. Um, and it's un not unusual to witness this kind of performances, uh, be it at the block roads, uh, be it in the streets of Saint Laurent and Saint Georges, and then control uh, on the river. At some point, the prefecture had quite a plan for the Morny River, which was about having boys uh, a nest across the river to prevent boats circulating from uh, Suriname to French Guiana. Um, now, um, as in regards to the border spectacle um, and, and the deportations, uh, this is in complete contradiction with uh, the borders being uh, experienced as living borders. And there is this expression in, in French, uh, in Creole, or in French, in French Guiana, which is vivre sur le fleuve. And someone in a conference I gave at La Sorbonne like a year ago uh, realized that the borders, he offered to call the borders as living borders, you know, and not as the, you know, to contradict the usual meaning of borders as being places of delimitation of uh, national uh, states. So, so I would quote someone again, uh, and I'm about to finish, from uh, who lives in Saint Georges um, de Loyapoc, and who says we are quite frustrated. Uh, um, by the installation of the border patrol in 2005, since the town is a militarized pest. We are in competition all the time. The families of the border patrol officers live in projects when the Onozo curve is insalubrious. It's, um, it's, um, neighborhood in Saint Georges. Um, the police comes, destroy the environment, our way of life, and leaves. We have nothing left. The bridge was not built for us. I consider myself as a Noyama Prancien from Oyapok um, and Amapa, the Brazilian state across uh, Saint Georges. Not just a Noyapokien. We used to live on both banks. Now the Brazilians cannot come over. They do need a visa when we do not need one to cross over. They discovered that the musician who has entertained the town for 18 years, the recent night on the town square, was undocumented. And so they deported him. We no longer have social events on Sunday nights. They want the bridge to be the only communication network to the detriment of all the canoes that used to be there. They destroyed all piers. There is only one left for the custom. 
So this bridge, which has been considered as a symbol of communication between Brazil and France, and actually the entire Guyana Shields, and even as, you know, demonstrating the presence of the European Union, this is the first sign you see when you cross from, um, from the Brazilian bank to the French bank, is actually experienced as, um, as, um, as having, as preventing, sorry, uh, any, com any circulation between uh, Brazil and French uh, Guyana. And what is really interesting is that when you drove, it was quite an experience last time I was in French Guyana, not to take a canoe, but uh, to drive to Brazil. Uh, I mean, you barely see one car on this, uh, on this bridge, whatever the time um, of the day. And most of the time, the bridge is closed because there is nobody who is crossing. So in conclusion, um, I would like to, you know, to make a few points regarding the definition of borders and maybe necropolitics and why, you know, we could characterize these immigration laws as a necropolitics. Uh, first, uh, establishing these uh, borders has been quite a tumultuous um, historical development, you know, starting with uh, the contesté of Suriname and Brazil, and then the decolonization of three of the Comorian Islands. Uh, then these geopolitical uh, borders uh, translate the sovereignty of the nation state, but actually um, they are uh, spaces of circulation and communication for these populations who live on both sides of the rivers or uh, of the channel in the case of the Comoros. Um, actually, then the third point is that this uh, so-called you know, natural border, be they the rivers or the sea, uh, and geopolitical ones are not the real borders. The real borders are all these um, police control blocks on the road, um, as well as what uh, Crowley, another um, a sociologist, American sociologist, has called institutional uh, borders, meaning access to healthcare, access to uh, education, where everything is done for foreigners, even if they are documented not to access um, um, uh, public uh, healthcare and um, for their kids to have access to schooling. Though this is changing uh, in French Guyana, it changed actually these past two weeks. And so my question is about, you know, what does uh, what kind of paradox is this to uh, witness this reinforcement of borders when these spaces are spaces of intense mobility and circulation uh, with populations who were used and who are used to communicate and to be established on both sides of the channel or on both sides of the rivers. And it's not just French Guiana and um, and uh, my yacht. I remember when um, I did my PhD field work, so in the 80s in, uh, in Guadeloupe, I was really, really frustrated uh, the first month of field work uh, because I could not meet with any uh, Guadeloupean gardener. The work was on traditional healing and gardener or traditional healer who had uh, spent his or his life, they were mainly men, um, in Guadeloupe. They were always in Guadeloupe, but moved very quickly um, to the Dominican Republic to cut the shadow can, um, to the Panama uh, Canal to build the canal, and to many other islands, including San Martin, to work. So, but in the 80s, we certainly didn't think of a globalization. Uh, we even did not talk of creolization at the time in French academia to make sense of all this circulation between islands. And if you spend time in San Martin, uh, this is even more. Uh, obvious. Um, so um, I will um, definitely, you know, ask this question. Uh, and part of the answer uh, I can provide is that since the departmentalization and the transformation of these former colonies into uh, overseas departments in 1946 and 2011, 
what we witness in terms of circulation is definitely um, a cut um, between these territories and their ancestral um, environment um, in favor of a unique relationship with continental France. And on this, I'm going to stop. Um, maybe we could move to the Q&A. Thank you. So, so many thanks, Catherine, for this tremendous presentation. And, and I have so plenty of pages of notes now. Uh, but uh, just, just, I'm just beginning about uh, practical things. So I, I, I rem remember you, everybody can, can ask questions on the chat. And we would be very pleased to, to share uh, on, on the screen and, 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 and having Catherine answers. Uh, and we are organizing this, this little um, talk uh, very freely. So I, I'm starting with general conclusion and, and, and few little questions because I don't want to monopolize anything there. Uh, and, and starting from, I think, the, the last words of, of Catherine, um, this closure of, of, of the space is obvious in uh, in the in the in the long term history of, of French Guiana, I know I know better. Uh, I'm t I'm teaching history in history in French Guiana University and 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 working about penal colonization there. And and we can see yes after uh, forty six uh, a cut between French Guiana and and its South American and Amazonian uh, mm -hmm. environment. It's very obvious uh, during the penal colonization, you, you have commercial and, and physical links with uh, Trinidad and Tobago, Venezuela, um, this, this region and, and which no longer exists uh, nowadays, which is going on and moving on in, in, the, in, the, last, in the last years with new migration uh, movement especially with venezuela i'm thinking about that but everything is is very tiny and difficult and, and, and in, in 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 the illegal world and and, and quite all the all the, the connections are with are with paris paris is the, is the biggest cities I, I i i always talk like this like it's it's normal uh, young uh, young men in french guiana supports uh, paris saint germain in football it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, the, the closer closest city uh, from cayenne it's 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 a reality you know mm -hmm. uh, we have only flight each each week to 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 brazil uh, you can imagine um, and I wanted to, 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 to have some reflection about long-term history and, and border co construction in, in, in French Guiana. I'm, I'm just writing an article about this, so I'm a bit fresh, I have a fresh mind. <laughs> uh, and, and Catherine is nourishing my work life so, so much. So, uh, so I thank you again for, for this. Uh, uh, um, and if you, if you start, um, uh, from from the, the, the early colonization, we, you have a first border which is built and which is uh, um, nowadays still working and still effective. Is the Atlantic border? Uh, is the oceanic border? It's uh, it's also effective from from Mayotte, not in an Atlantic term, but this oceanic border which is like embodies so much in Mayotte with this coral recif, you know, like we, you have two borders, you know, like you have the ocean, this recif and, and, and then the island. And it's very, I think, uh, interesting to see this map there and these little, little doors, <laughs> you, you imagine like police stations each in each doors in this, in this coral uh, recif. Um, and for, for, for this Caribbean and, and, and North, South American, Northern South American world. The Atlantic is, is this uh, abyssal frontier border. Uh, if we, we take these this words from uh, the Sousa Santos uh, and this fundamental uh, border uh, share um, the world in two, in two parts and hermetic parts, colonial parts and uh, metropolis and metropolis is created by colonies. In, in, in fact, uh, in, in the Membe um, thinking about necropolitics and, and so on, and 
this border share uh, populations between two, two, two groups. The group who can uh, freely um, cross this border, uh, and for them, this Atlantic border is a, uh, is is a, is a communicate is is like um, an interface. Like, and and a second part of population, which is uh, what Catherine called in 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 her work, a one-way border. You know, like yeah. you cross one time, but you can cross back. Uh, and in the long term, you have two figures in French Guiana slaves and um, prisoners uh, where while where this constraint uh, population uh, we, we can't cross back the, this, this border uh, so first border uh, second borders uh, are uh, the external borders of, of the of the colonies um, uh, this, uh, this 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 these are um, the, the, the products of, of a long-term uh, construction uh, for the French Guiana case is, is, a, is a complex one, uh, especially in the, with the Franco-Brazilian uh, border. But there uh, also is, uh, but you, you know, Mayotte also is a, is a, is a new border. Indeed, yeah. you, you explained this uh, very well, like by ra raping the, 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 the international law, uh, I don't. I, I had. I had make a mistake in tra in translation. I think. No, no, no. I love this uh, word. <laughs> okay, okay. It's it now because <laughs> I, I I had doubts now. <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, and uh, uh, in the in the seventies, uh, French creates a, a new territory, uh, mm. in fact, and new borders, uh, and and this international law is. Is, is also an expression of, of, of this abyssal frontier of uh, borders uh, bond in, in, in during the, the colonial uh, period. And, and um, the, this uh, constriction is embodied by uh, very uh, coercive institution in the two cases, uh, and which are police, prisons, and so on. Uh, the two borders of French Guiana were built uh, uh, by um, penal colonization, Saint Laurent and Saint Georges are two uh, penal colonies, uh, and were were founded in this in this uh, in this term. F third uh, third frontiers, internal borders, internal borders, and and that's the the the, 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 po the plot of of Catherine uh, Stork. And uh, if you, you have a long-term analysis, uh, it's, it starts in, 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 uh, in, the, in the colonial period also. Uh, for French Guiana case, you have firstly um, the autochthonous world, which is um, put apart from the colony. Uh, with uh, It's, it's uh, your, your, your well-known colleague, Yeri Urban, from, from West Indian, French West Indies University, who, who worked a lot about this. Uh, this indigenous uh, people have a status of free state, uh, and then they are living in the in the borders of the colony, but they have no uh, rights because they are considered like mm -hmm. uh, uh, for, quite like foreigners, in, in fact. So, mm -hmm. so state don't have uh, anything to, to any responsibility to them, and 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 it, and it only ended in in the late sixties with uh, the with the disparition of the territory of Inini, who, who was like uh, two third of French Guiana. Uh, apart from the departmentalization, you know, like so, uh, this first uh, group, second group are uh, for uh, for sure um, prisoners, and we have in, in in French Guiana like complete territories dedicated to, to 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 prisons, and it's very interesting to link also with with Mayotte. You have two colonies. Who, who and and I w want to know uh, to to hear Catherine then about that about the, the the comparison between Mayotte and French Guiana. But I think there are cross history to 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 analyze and and to think about. Uh, you have two two colonies w w which don't have a purpose in the in the French Empire, uh, or it's it's hard to find. Uh, French Guiana is a complete. Uh, uh, 
um, after um, the Kuru expedition in in one uh, in 1763, uh, you you have a complete disparition of of uh, can and and sugar industry quite quite, quite completely, and 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 the free colonization is stopped over uh, at this date. It's only a few. A uh, few plantations there, but n nothing very, um, very large and, and and very meaningful for for the imperial uh, purpose. In Mayotte, you don't have a real economy, uh, to a real colonial economy. I don't know so much about it, so mm -hmm. I, I don't want to to speak uh, to <laughs> to speak so so much about that. But you have two two colonies without a real purpose, and and wh when you you the the, the, the governments initiated this penal colonization project. They hesitated, in fact, between uh, Comor uh, many territories, including Com Comor Comoros Island, uh, which it, it's an history which is not very well known, but we, no. you had, uh, I, I just um, consulted archives and and also Réunion was, uh, Madagascar, this region uh, of the Indian Ocean was, was very, uh, Analyzed by, by by the the parliamentary commissions and and so on, and the, and and finally, uh, government cho cho choose uh, Guyana and, and then uh, New Caledonia, and the specialization of the, of the space uh, produce like uh, uh, dedicated territories. Like on the Maroni, there are uh, ninety kilometers long territory. Uh, dedicated to prison, it's it's uh, a free air prison uh, to 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 speak like uh, Foucault, and and um, so so vi these are um, territories out of uh, common law uh, in an exception state, and uh, after you can have third 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 category in in colonial uh, French Guiana. Uh, which is uh, limited in his movements is the category of um, uh, freed prisoners. After their liberations, they are forbidden to access to many parts of the colony, Cayenne and its suburbs, and uh, also saint georges de loyapoc to prevent from uh, uh, evasion. Um, then uh, you have... An, in many borders built in in the in the French Guiana, and and the last and the last border is the Inini territory in in the 1930, uh, which separates the the interior of the of the colony, uh, dedicated to autochthonous uh, populations, and the rest of the colony uh, uh, in the littoral. So you have plenty of internal uh, borders, and Catherine speak about the actuality of his internal borders, and it, it, all the interest of of of, of, uh, of the works is showing how much uh, the the space, the post-colonial space, is fragmented as the colonial space was, and, and you have a long-term history of mm -hmm. fragmentation of, of of the space, and and I'm also very interested in how much. Uh, space uh, as importance in, in, in analyzing history or, or societies uh, in our eras. And um, this, this I, I, I am going to, to, to finish uh, with that. Um, I, I, I really want to, to hear <laughs> Catherine about this um comparison of uh, of these two these two post colonial worlds mayotte and and french guiana and how much they they can embody this um long long uh, decolonization process and it and it's uh, um, Insufficiencies and its its, um, its limitations, yes, and how much the departmentalization was a chimera for from many uh, in many aspects, um, and uh, this this has a, a huge actuality. I don't know if Catherine had the information because it's very fresh, uh, but but the 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 court, the public court, administrative court of of um, of French Guiana decided to to force 
uh, Cayenne uh, municipality to welcome in the schools uh, yeah. 16 uh, yes you had the information and and the reaction of of the former Cayenne that I don't know. <laughs> uh, uh, yes you don't know that and the reaction of the former Cayenne mayor is very interesting she has been elected freshly senator in in September so she's no more uh, mayor a mayor because it's forbidden in France to to, to have these two mandates uh, but she 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 wants to add in uh, in a law uh, in the parliament the possibility for uh, overseas to 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 limit uh, the access to 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 schools as uh, an overseas specificity uh, so uh, we we are there <laughs> A, a, a long term history of, of and a long term grammar of segregation and uh, and and Catherine uh, is right to to work about this and and to and to start her presentation speaking about this mexico border and and because this presentation uh, asks us to to focus uh, as french guy i'm very involved <laughs> and and uh, in this in this way because to focus on our own uh, necropolitics, you know, like fr France is a bit um, how to how to, to say um, uh, a bit too 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 ah I I don't know how to express but a bit far from these subjects in in the international opinion and in in our, in its national opinion too. And uh, I think this far-flung uh, borders needs to needs to be in the in the in the center of, of our analysis because it's also a, a way to to know m more about our own uh, general politics and our own uh, so so societies in in Europe also. So it was for my conclusions. <laughs> I, I, I'm I'm a bit lost in my notes, but maybe. Uh, I don't. I don't know if Catherine, you want to react or more. Oh, questions. absolutely. And um, your comments are so rich. I'm not sure I can react to um, anything. But I will start with the Mexican border because, um, and this is what I'm working on now. I mean, <clears throat> working on as I try to work on its a grand proposal and. Um, and maybe more, I don't remember if I talk about it in one last publication, but your question is absolutely relevant in a way you don't suspect. Uh, because, um, I mean, all my work on borders has been to demonstrate how, um, first, how the Caribbean territories and now the Indian Ocean ones are really the far flung border of Europe and how, in many ways, uh, policies have been experimented in this in these territories in terms of immigration laws, but the the a number of anthropologists are showing how it's the same for the U.S. that the first um, border of the U.S. was the maritime border that was developed in the 90s under the Clinton administration in the Caribbean, you know, to prevent Cubans and Haitians to reach uh, the shores of the U.S. And I'm really, you know, talking about cutting edge uh, research. We can, we can uh, share uh, citations uh, after the talk. So what I'm really want to develop now is um, to look at how the Caribbean um how to you no know, was central to the development of um the US and the EU and the French borders starting uh in the 90s uh and I'm not going to develop, but 95 is a starting point for the Clinton administration, as it's the starting point for the French. Uh, and so that you can, you know, wonder about, uh, you know, discussions taking place, global policies between the EU and the US, or the US and France, with the Caribbean being uh, the 
central um, starting point. So really what is at stake in all this work is about the recent, it's about re-centralizing the Caribbean at the center of, you know, European or French, I mean, the work has to be done, uh, immigration policies. So, which is quite a research, <laughs> quite a research plan uh, for the future. Uh, and as I said, um, since I'm starting, um, what we witness on the Mexican border with children being put in cages is what has been going on for years in Mayotte with children being in a, um, in um, the detention center. Uh, and there will be uh, more to say about that. So that's for your third point, Samuel. And now how to address comparisons between, you know, French Guiana and, um, and Mayotte. I feel like there is something uh, to do. I was not aware that Mayotte and the Indian Ocean colonies were, you know, considered as potential uh, penal colonies uh, before the choice was made uh, towards French Guiana uh, and New Caledonia. But um, we, I mean, again, immigration laws is a way to see the historical development of uh, the necropolitics because, I mean, I would talk about necropolitics in French Guiana, but on another topic about the civil statute, état civil, uh, not civil statute, but about the état civil, the registrar in, uh, in America, you know, how native populations, since you mentioned the autochthonous population, the indigenous population. Indigenous in, in American does not have the same meaning as in French, but we say uh, indigenous, uh, you know, have been deprived of the registrar. So meaning that um, French lawyers and legal scholars talk about um, legal insecurity. I prefer to talk following the work of other anthropologists in, uh, in the British, in the former British Caribbean of statelessness, because without being registered, you know, you have no administrative identity and then you cannot do anything of your life. I mean, you could until 10 years ago, but even your kids now, this is what is at stake on the uh, Mahoney River cannot be registered to school because, um, collectivity uh, does not uh, want to fund scholarship for these kids to take the canoe, the pirogue, you know, to get from their village to, um, to, uh, to the location of the school. So um, not being registered is part of this necropolitics. And you have the same issue in Mayotte as well. So what is fascinating for me, and I've been interested in, in the Comoros Islands for years. It's really, you know, starting two years ago and now more than ever that I've been able to do um, ethnographic research. You can see how in both territories uh, it's about the same issues as long as you have indigenous population, you know, registration. When Mayotte, in anticipation of Mayotte becoming a French department, the entire um, um, naming system had to be changed, you know, moving from a Muslim naming system to um, um, how would you call this one? Uh, well, let's say French one. So um, first name and the last name, which is not how Muslims, you know, uh, do establish their genealogy and translate their kinship system in their names. Uh, and once again, the administration and the judicial system did not do the work on time so that uh, when did it start early in the 2000, 20 years later, you ha still have uh, undocumented Maori or Comorians in France or in Mayotte because they cannot prove their identity. And along, since I've worked on that over the summer, in the summer over the same lines, um, mistake in the names, you know, uh, so that the registration documents, birth registration documents cannot be used to get a visa, to get a tip de séjour and so on, to go to school, to move uh, from Mayotte to France or back from France to, uh, to Mayotte and so on. So the registrar, the um, civil, is 
you know, really one way to address necropolitics, which I did not do in this talk, and I published extensively about that in both territories. And then the immigration law, the specialization of law, and about how, you know, what was implemented in French Guiana first, then became implemented when Mayotte became a department. So the question is, you know, the reasons behind the departmentalization of Mayotte and our different hypotheses or analyses, I will not get it. So I'm not answering directly, but what I can see are the parallels of the historical evolution in terms of passing laws. Um, even in the um, maternities, you know, uh, how everything was done uh, in Cayenne and uh, in Mayotte for the kids of a French father not to be, um, no, for the French father not to be considered as being the father of the kids so that the kids do not have access to French nationality. You know, you become French because you were born in France and you spent five years, uh, you can prove you spent five years before the age of 13, 16, 18, uh, or because you're the kid of a French parent, or because you're a kid of a foreigner who, were, who was born uh, in France. So it was a way to cut access to French nationality. And it looks like it's the same techniques you know, in the administration, be it in, in, um, in Mayotte or in Cayenne, and it would be, um, I mean, in French Guiana, because the same is at stake in Saint Laurent du Maroni and so on. It would be interesting to add New Caledonian to that. <laughs> but um, I will never go there. Um, so, as for the first point, um, you know, I cannot answer on on border from an anthropological perspective, but uh, I'm tempted to talk about the continuity in the same way to, you talk about the continuity um, um, regarding uh, these different types of borders. I'd like to switch from the territories of the islands or the continent to um, the oceans. And you know, this was called the, I mean, this is called the oceanic turn uh, in uh, US anthropology, which is about considering uh, the oceans not as merely blank spaces that were only used by, you know, white Western males <laughs> conquering the world starting in the 18th century and the Enlightenment but as places of actions and death for, I mean, in this case, we are talking about um, at the time of the slave trade and now um, the crossing of the Mediterranean, the crossing of the Mozambique Channel, and even the deportation centers that the Australian government um, placed on a number of islands, you know, and not on, um, and even if they're closed now and not in Australia. So I will see a continuity. I, I mean, I don't have the historical perspective on borders. I think you, you did it very well, but I will see a continuity in terms of the oceans. And uh, we cannot talk about, you know, rivers in the case of French Guiana, but as places of, uh, of death and necropolitics back to the beginning of um, slavery up to now with, um, um, with a movement of people. Um, and this, you know, maybe this is a way uh, to refer to Membe's necropolitics and by looking at, you know, immigration laws or um, as an extension of um, necropolitics. I have this quote, let me see if I can find everything shut off. Uh, you know, in his article on necropolitics, he, um, Mambe says that he put forward the notion of necropolitics and necropower to account for the various ways in which, in our contemporary, contemporary world, weapons are deployed in the interest of maximum destruction of persons and the creation of death worlds, new and unique forms of social existence in which vast populations are subjected to conditions of life, conferring upon them the status of living dead. 
Um, and I would argue that this is what is at stake with the question of the registrar and with you know current um, crossing of oceans and channels. And in the continuity of the plantation system and of slavery, which are at at you know at hurt at the heart of Mambe's um, essay on necropolitics. Yeah, those are my comments to your very <laughs> stimulating <laughs> comments, to Samuel. And and I thank you because you you answer in a lar in a, in, a, in a large part, and and I think we are going to to, to have many conversation about this in in the future. And I'm I'm very pleased to know more about oceanic term, mm -hmm. which I, I didn't know. Okay. In, I. I I confess, and and I will um, and I will uh, read about this. And uh, I think I, I let my, the 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 talk to my colleagues and to the public if there are so um, any questions from from there. Otavio, if you want, you can you can make your question. I I think you have one. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Just I cannot hear you. Uh, well, let me see. As I said, I, I found this microphone by chance, these earplugs, but... Yeah, that's better, Catherine, yes, that's better. How is it now? Okay, good. It's very good. Very good. Very nice. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank you for your brilliant explanation on the proposed term. Um, in light uh, of what was presented, inspired by your by your article entitled uh, "Paperless Amerindians and Black Maroons in Guyana: Fine Manufacturing on the Marani River," I would like uh, to ask okay. you a few questions. Uh, living and working at Toyapoque, I was impressed by the impermeability of the French-Brazilian border in relation to Brazilians uh, who wish to cross to the French side of the Divine Line. Uh, among the countless barriers that exist both in relation to the entry and the permanence of foreigners in Guyana, as barriers of cultural and social order, for example, uh, the one that most problematizes the context of these populations, in my view, uh, is that of uh, Documental or papers or papers nature, uh, considering that the documental barrier, unlike the others, is a direct result of biopolitical strategies elaborated at the governmental level. Uh, in your opinion, uh, what are the factors, historical and contemporary, that strengthen the role of Guyana as a place of experimentation, a kind of laboratory? to manufacture this especially, but also other barriers to immigrants. Uh, my second question uh, is, uh, in our opinion, what are the main factors that influence this apparent French foreign policy in relation, in relation to Guyana specifically of non-regional integration with neighboring Latin countries, given its restrictive policies both to the entry and the permanence of foreigners in its territory. <laughs> and my third and last question uh, is, what reasons <laughs> do you consider to be decisive for the fact that in Guyana, the legislation for the stay of foreigners is even more unfavorable than in France? What factors influence this more intense vulnerability of immigrants in Guyana? <laughs> Thank you. That's it. That's my. <laughs> well, <laughs> I'm not going to tell you. I missed the word um, in your third question. Uh, you, uh, I did not understand. I mean, I did not hear the beginning. What are the. F it was not factors. What did you say? Which are decisive to. I don't remember. Oh, I don't hear you now. Let me see. I don't know. The uh, first question. The third. The first the one. Third. The third. Um, 
the third something was, decisive to but uh, yes uh, what reasons do you consider to be decisive for the fact that in Guyana the legislation for the stay of foreigners is is even more unfavorable than in France what factors influence this more intense vulnerability oh. of immigrants in Guyana than in France? All right. In, in France. Um, those are you know difficult questions, and I um you know I can only um uh, provide a number of hypotheses. Um, I believe that as for your first question about the historical and contemporary uh, factor that make it, you know, possible um, for French Guyana to be a laboratory. It's a fact that it's a faraway place. So basically anything can happen and nobody is going to, you know, to, to protest, to contest and all of that. And this was really clear in the 90s. I mean, I, I mean, there was nobody working on this topic and I came to French Guyana at the time as a, an activist, um, you know, working uh, with um, organization that supported immigrant rights and what was uh, striking, I mean, there was a number of lawyers at the time based in uh, Martinique uh, that were part of these workshops. Um, um, and those were very intense workshops we developed all over the Caribbean in Haiti, in Guadeloupe, in, uh, in French Guiana. Um, and I mean, the law was minimal at the time, and it was even not respected. I mean, the police will do anything, um, arrest people in the street, put them in a bus and back to the borders. And there was nobody, to, there was no witness, you know, and nobody to report. Uh, I mean, uh, shanty towns were raised down, as it happens in uh, San Martin in 95, following Hurricane Luis. And at the time in French Guiana, it was a Susini um, shanty town, 95, you know, at the same time. And um, that was even considered as legal by lawyers who were sent by the League des Droits de l'Homme, <laughs> lawyers. Um, like, well, for sanitary reasons, you know, the, the local governments, the prefecture decided to raise the anti shanty towns. But you don't do that. You know, it's like when this president says, we're going to stop counting <laughs> the votes. I said I will not talk about the current political situation and, you know, it's just uh, present. But, you know, the prefect will say, we're going to raise down uh, the shanty towns in San Martin, in French Guiana, and that's it. But now they do respect the legal process. And it does happen, but um, they do respect the legal process. So, and it's why I really follow uh, Alison Mons when she said that detention centers in Ireland, she's a geographer, um, an American geographer who at some point focused on um, the study of the islands and, uh, you know, from this uh, um, uh, necropolitics, even if she's not in this framework uh, perspective. Uh, saying that, you know, islands are far away and there is no witness. Um, and uh, what is even more interesting in the case of the overseas territories, and I know precisely how, you know, the administrative court um, passed this judgment regarding uh, the schooling of uh, finance kids. Um, most of the, I mean, if not all, the organizations in French Guiana uh, and in Mayotte and all over the overseas territories who really do legal work in support of foreigners' rights are um, um, constituted by um, people, uh, residents of metropolitan origin, you know, and not by local uh, residents. Not There are not so many uh, Guyanese, Maori, Guadeloupean in these organizations. Um, and the ones who actually are, you know, staff members uh, all come from uh, France as well. So, you know, it's far away. And, um, you know, what your third questions um, about uh, what reasons, uh, what are the decisive reasons? Um, for French Guyana to be so vulnerable, this is what you're saying? This is what you said, right? 
Yes, uh, non-regional integration. No, that was the second one, map. but the third one. I'm still trying to process the third question. Uh, it's about the, the vulnerability of the no state. Problem. Yeah. Yes, that's the. Yeah, and maybe it's one. because yes. precisely there was no local support. You know, I mean, uh, the seventies in Guadeloupe were horrific. Um, there was a Haitian uh, anthropologist at the time, Lionel Curbon, who worked on you know Dominican immigration and what he. I mean, he was not working. He, he was working on what he called the pogroms. You know, the um, hunts towards uh, Haitians and Dominicans at the time in the seventies. Um, to a point that, um, I mean, I was asked over the summer to write about racism in uh, other cis territories. I did not feel like doing so at this specific time for a number of reasons, but I do think that xenophobia and racism have to be addressed. You know, I remember giving a talk uh, at La Sorbonne last year, and it was focused on French Guiana, and at the end of the talk, a woman came down, it was a very, in a very nice office theater, she came down with a mic and she said that she was a spokesperson of, um, of one protest movement at the time and that this talk was really good because it shows how we had, it showed how we have, our French Guiana has to get rid of all these undocumented migrants and so on and so forth. And that was in complete contradiction with my talk, and I did not answer, but the amount of hatred, uh, even you know, among people like us, is absolutely amazing. And I believe this is one of the success of French colonialism, you know, to have managed to um, divide the long racial and legal line um, you know, the um, the populations, uh, uh, the neighboring populations. Um, but this, this is a, a topic of study for sure. And as for regional integration, I have no idea. But for sure, <laughs> it's beyond my scope. For sure, it's a total contradiction. Um, but uh, I don't know, I don't know. When you say you have no flights, uh, at least there is one to go to the opera in Manaus. I believe, uh, you know, from Cayenne um, to Brazil, and it's impossible to get to French Guiana. And uh, I mean, I live in New York. It takes three days to get there. You know, so you really want, you really need to get down, or to uh, you really, you know, you have to be motivated. And uh, and even so, I mean, for the next Caribbean Studies um, conference in. Um, in uh, Guyana, that's not so easy to get there from French Guiana and so on and so forth. So, I, I don't know what to say about. Uh, J just a word for, for this because I'm very happy to hear Catherine because f three times she couldn't speak <laughs> in, in French Guiana University because of travel problems. So, finally, I can hear her in this context. But <laughs> it was and like. I'm not going to speak at all, even if I can come. <laughs> So, so thanks to the technology, I can hear Catherine. And it's good. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much, Catherine. No, thank you very, for uh, this stimulating question, Otavio. Well, Catherine, uh, I would like to share with you some co uh, some of the few of the comments in chat. Okay. I don't see them actually. They don't show what? up. Oh, voila. Uh, Catherine uh, no, Leobard, say hello <laughs> to you. Oh, sorry, Clemence. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, mm -hmm. Martins Rodrigo, a Brazilian guy who is watching us. This one came up, well, you know, Gwanen. popped up earlier. Well, uh, Elke, mm -hmm. Elke Good. Hi, Catherine from New York, New York. and uh, yeah, sorry, nice uh, well, yeah. Philip Buba. No questions so far, but voilà. very nice commands. <laughs> oh, there's a, voilà, there's a, there's a, a, a question from Philip Buba. Uh, I don't know if it's a question or a comment, but if you like to comment. Yeah, I think I, maybe this speak. question can be before I answer uh, Manuel. 
by saying that we cannot talk about necropolitics in the same way in French Guiana. And thanks, Philippe, for this question. Um, you know, it's not about uh, death as it is in the Mozambique Chamber, but um, I talk about the, the registrar, the Etat Civil, which is like, uh, you know, death, uh, administrative death, and we all death, means you cannot do anything if you have no administrative um, identity. And then um, it's not the physical death, but, you know, it's as comparable. And uh, even if, you know, people tend to think that, okay, being deported to Suriname or Brazil is not a big deal because you come back. Well, when you're deported in the evening, you cannot pick up your kids at school. This happens all the time in St. George, and the school does not want to uh, keep them. What do you do? And uh, I remember a lawsuit for uh, someone who was deported. Um, as I mentioned, French citizen, but due to racial profiling, they were you know, considered as being, uh, as being Surinamese, deported twice. And when you have been deported, I have so many testimonials, 20 times, you know, in five years, what kind of life you, you lead. So it's not the physical death, but how do we define death? And Membe in his article is, you know, really to, um, at the very end, and the way he, this essay is, re is read by migration, study scholars, uh, I believe what we witness um, today with the current immigration policies is um, similar to, um, to uh, what did he said, uh, ghostly dead, some, uh, something like that. So I, I think I answered, um, living dead, yeah, sorry. Living dead, perfect. Well, uh... It's a question for Otavio. If you can develop what you mean about uh, regarding uh, French Guiana being a laboratory. Uh, I think uh, if you want to comment this question, Otavio. Okay. Uh, well, uh, this perspective I put forward refers to the hypothesis listed in Catherine's <laughs> article. <laughs> the article uh, I was uh, referred entitled uh, uh, Papers Amerindians and Black Maroons in Guyana, Foreign Manufacturing on the Marini River. And it, it was about uh, the many barriers uh, in uh, in a way, uh, not in a specific way, but uh, it was about uh, uh, another many things to the to the many barriers that uh, was uh, experiences experienced by foreigners in French Guiana, uh, documental barriers, uh, cultural barriers, uh, social barriers, but. Uh, uh, besides this cultural and, and, and social barriers, uh, in my perspective, uh, living in the city of Ayapoque and, uh, and talking uh, to Brazilians uh, who made uh, this, um, um, this, this everyday crossings to the, to the French Guiana, uh, my, I, my, my understanding that uh, of their experiences that those uh, legal barriers, documental uh, barriers, uh, uh, papers barriers are the most uh, important, or uh, uh, those are the barriers whose. Uh, uh, who's apply uh, a dynamic of vulnerabilization more intense uh, than the social barrier or cultural barrier. Uh, and, uh, <laughs> I was wondering if you wanted yes, me friend. to jump in. Um, yeah, <laughs> no, thank you for yes, uh, starting. Um, you know, I cannot answer with details because I don't have them in mind now, but 
um, as uh, Otavio said, I published on this topic of how the specific provision, um, legal provisions in the law for uh, Guadeloupe, French Guiana, and Mayotte are first tested in these territories before being implemented in France. Uh, and this is in regards of uh, asylum law, for example, in terms of um, the number of days in detention, in terms of, I mean, a, an infinite number of procedures, uh, if they happen to be successful in the overseas territories, are they implemented in, uh, in continental France and in Europe? Thank you. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, another question here, Catherine. Thank you for your presentation. Oh, good question. Huh? Yeah, I have no idea, Clément. Thanks for being here. Uh, I only know that uh, this, I mean, the situation in Mayotte, um, where um, the border, I mean, the the borders of Mayotte were closed, so um, there was no way to get to Mayotte, where I should have been uh, this summer and the borders of the Comoros Islands were closed. However, people kept crossing, um, and a number of them for medical reasons, you know. I mean, it's a question of life and death. There is no decent uh, public health system in the Comoros Islands. And so they were pushed back, that we know, by the Border Patrol. And also, uh, the Border Patrol continued arresting uh, people in Mayotte, putting them not in the detention center, but in the prison, which is not where you put, you know, undocumented foreigners, but this is what they did. And um, uh, from there, um, they will finally, when the borders open again, uh, transfer them to the detention center without testing them. So there was a fear of the spread of, um, of the pandemic, you know, in um, my uh, the main prison of, in the prison of Mayotte, a number of detainees had um, had COVID, and then uh, it was just following the deconfinement, but under the state of uh, sanitary emergency, uh, the French government flew um, um, a plane with uh, Malagasy, Malgash, Malagasy. Uh, uh, citizen back to Madagascar without <laughs> the, the airport in Madagascar knowing about this transfer. So they managed to transfer, I don't remember the number of people, but dozens of um, Malagasy citizens back to Madagascar. So without respecting, you know, all the legal process. So actually, it seems like the pandemic was used and this has to be done in details, you know, but this is my feeling about you know, uh, keeping the border patrols active, but not in French Guiana, actually. Now I remember some discussion. Uh, there was maybe one or two deportations just to make people work, but that was it. So it stopped in French Guiana during the confinement. That I can, this is what Simad said. Actually. Mm -hmm. I can I can add some elements about F French Guiana. If, uh, and, and hello, Clemence, thanks to be there. Uh, so because I, I lived the confinement there, so I have some <laughs> informations um, so for French Guiana um, the, the first thing was um, em, em, the, the retention center was emptied in the first days of, uh, of the pandemic of the, the containment and of the quarantine so uh, there were no more uh, foreigners there uh, very soon yeah. uh, um, and the second uh, thing was the closure of, of the borders of, at the checkpoints uh, in Irakubo and Regina, a very severe um, closure because it, it was very difficult to have permission even for uh, people who are living in the zone between the, the real border and, and the checking and, and the checkpoint. Uh, only medical staffs or very, very few authorization. Um, and there was like a, a very big spot on the Oyapok border during the, 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 this confinement because uh, the hotspot of the, of, the, of the epidemic was there. And, and during two weeks, there was a, a dramatic situation in Saint-Georges, like 
complete mess, but li like it was in Amapa State, in in, in fact, in in the in the Brazilian in Brazilian side, and uh, and after for sure the, the epidemics come come came to to French Guiana, and and, and the, there was a social movement organized during the, the, the pandemic. Uh, in French Guiana was unifying like many organizations, syndic uh, trade unions, associations, uh, political parties from left, uh, and they asked quite precisely to to have a, a politic on the border, and it was quite quite new thing in French Guiana because we, this movement asked um, an international provisory hospital on the border. For both sides, because every, everything is linked. Like it's, uh, you, you you can't have a, a health policy in, in France in French side and and uh, another in, in Brazilian side to be efficient. But it was not uh, heard at all by by the French authorities at all at all. There were some solidarities actions from French Guiana to Brazil in this in this moment. So we had like. Uh, uh, social society action between borders, but closure of the borders by prefecture. Uh, that was a, was a quite complete situation in French Guiana, I think. Thank you. Perfect. Uh, Catherine, I have a question for you, but I promised you that is a, an easy question. <laughs> no, none of them were difficult. Yeah. I, I, I wish I, we had more time to really discuss or think about them, you know? But. Oh, yeah, yeah. Our time is almost finished. Yeah. We, are, we, we are here for almost two hours, and I think it's a little too much for us. <laughs> but it's just a little question. <laughs> Look, uh, I, I, I've read your, your paper, Fortress Europe. And it's uh, well, well. Thank you for uh, first of all. Thank you for accepting our invitation. Your presentation was uh, 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 very interesting for the theory, theore theoretical, empirical questions that we are uh, uh, discussing in Copalc. I think we have uh, too much in common. Uh, and methodological regards, epistemological regards that uh, are very similar, and uh, it's a it's a very important experience for us to improve our perspective. And uh, I would like to to thank you before uh, uh, presenting my question. Well. Uh, reading your, your paper, Fortress Europe, I identify a, a, a phrase uh, that is very beautiful for me, uh, at page 230. You say, uh, I quote you, uh, borders cannot be defined as mere boundaries, but rather must be analyzed in connection to a globally interconnected political and economic system that aims to retain economic wealth in particular places on the planet. So, uh, yes. there, oh. <laughs> you, you, <laughs> you, uh, you articulate the, uh, you articulate uh, in interdisciplinary regards uh, from anthropology, history, uh, geography and also um, this suggestion uh, of an economic politic regard about the construction of those territories, the, the political constructions of those territories, uh, this notion of law specialization is very, very important uh, in this context. And I w would like to hear you about uh, this uh, uh, economic system, uh, because you you suggest the, the 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 relevance of the economic system to uh, to the the this specialization and how this specialization uh, impacts the everyday life of uh, 
those people, those stateless peoples, almost. And but I I would like to hear you about you are referring to uh, uh, the fin financial system, uh, this the a certain sovereignty of the capital of, of the financial capital. How 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 this uh, this uh, sovereignty of the financial capital uh, uh, confronts the sovereignty of the nation states? In the very end of your article, you you talk about the the the. the the continuity of um, imperial anxieties rather than the affirmation of the sovereignty of the nation state and mm -hmm. between this, the, this imperial anxieties and the sovereignty of the nation states there is an economic system and i i i would like to to hear about this other terms of of uh that if that uh, uh interacts in the production of of the space and uh, the the everyday life of of those peoples. I don't know if I I was clear, but it's uh, a, a part of a commentary, a part of a question, and uh, which uh, 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 guide me to uh, uh, to look forward at your uh, epistemological background. I know that you are uh, an historian, an anthropological historian, formed in the uh, Ecole de Hautes Études en Sciences Sociales, and there is a, an, an interdisciplinary approach in uh, at at uh, EHSS, uh, which is very remarkable in your in your work in in your uh, presentation too. And I, th I, I just want to hear you more about about how you conceive this economic system, the actual economic system in in this in these connections, special connections. Thank you, dear Phil. And you said it was going to be uh, my uh, question. question. <laughs> It could be, you know, a um, one-year seminar, and um, I was sorry, I was not looking at you all the time, wondering where the hell did I talk about that <laughs> in my article, you know. So, um, uh, but you said page 230, and I'm not going to read, but yeah, it seems like I mentioned economics. Um, I can, you know, I can uh, share with you if you want. <laughs> no, 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 I have it now. I was able to find it. Um, no, and I prefer, you know, I'm not going to, to answer at this level, but uh, what I... Um, I I'm not sure how I want to answer to that, but what I want to, to, to say is, and this was, a, this is still, a, this was a debate like uh, in the late 90s among, precisely at the Ecole de Détude, with the local section of the Ligue des Droits de l'Homme and the number of anthropologists who were started to, um, started to work. On, um, on immigration and the movement des sans papiers in 1996, and the question was really about economics, you know, and how um, the debate was about, you know, these immigrants take the work of, um, you know, of the local population and so on. And uh, I really follow uh, De Genova's uh, analysis, um, you know, when he says because it works so well for for the overseas territories, and I guess in France as well, but uh, that undocumentation is uh, precisely a way to increase people's vulnerability and then to transform them as very cheap labor. Uh, I like to say, you know, that um, nobody wants to live, I don't know where you live, but and nobody wants to leave one's country of origin, you know, we do it for a number of reasons. Um, and um, and uh, we will go back, I believe, or in the best cases, we can be uh, transnational. 
And for the people who work for, who left for economic reasons, being undocumented prevents them from coming back, actually, and from circulating. And um, that uh, witnessed very well in, um, in San Martin, where the um, undocumented uh, Haitian population was really stuck uh, and could not do anything, be their work or not, when the Haitian citizen who managed to have their visa, when there was no work, would come back, and, you know, would go back to Haiti and then go back a few months later uh, and so on. And now they can even retire. Um, in Haiti. So I think that, um, and I could see how, you know, undocumented workers were really working for nothing, were living in a constant uh, state of terror. And as we can see in the US, with 12 million of um, undocumented workers that uh, Bush, as a president, wanted to, wanted to pass a law of regularization. And you see the difference between the Bush time, who was not really, you know, a, a liberal person, and the Trump administration between reg regularization and um, and precisely uh, deporting, and the number of deportations really increased under the Obama administration. You know, here he's called the uh, um, deportee in chief, you know, just for, <laughs> because of the increase of deportation. Um, so I don't know if I answer to, um, to your question, but, and I'm, I'm not very satisfied with my answer or even with my thinking in terms of uh, economics, uh, labor, uh, labor force, and then the imperial anxieties, yes, because I mean, for all the discussions I had with high ranked public servants, with prefects or with border patrols um, in Guyana and Guadeloupe or elsewhere, there was a total lack of imagination about imagining, you know, the, the circulation of people in a legal way that would prevent uh, this climate of terror, because this is really what it is, uh, like this circulation card, but this St. one, for example, and I'm myself for, you know, the free movement of people and the no border movement, but that's another discussion. But I really think in terms of imperial anxieties when, um, you see the systematic divide which is being built uh, between different populations and dif different nation states and the recolonization. This is what Mayotte is about, you know, of, uh, of part of a country, the Comoros uh, Islands, uh, that wanted to become uh, independent. So I don't know, as you said, two hours is a lot. <laughs> I don't know if I answer to your to your question uh, in terms of you know the relationship between uh, economics and uh, you know the first time I gave a public talk in um, in the French Guiana about this work about undocumented um, native population and actually um, the Bushinage slash Maroon population. I remember colleagues making fun of me, you know, what is she going to talk about? Or this is nonsense, blah, blah, blah. And even the years I spent there before. Um, and at the end, uh, um, you know, there was, there were a number of uh, indigenous uh, young people uh, who approached me saying, you managed to develop uh, our, not to develop, but to make sense of our personal situation uh, at the research topic. And you provided the analytical and theoretical framework of what we are living. And all the colleagues I realized who were really critical of my work were all people who had their gardeners, undocumented gardeners, uh, house cleaners, and blah, 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 blah. You know, be they French, be they Guyanese, be they Creole, be they not Creole. Um, but they never met the relationship, though they're, you know, they know that they hire undocumented uh, house workers precisely, um, precisely precisely because of the cost of it. And they're not going to do anything to secure their, um, the position of the people who have been working for them for years. So that's um, you know, a very concrete way to answer to your more theoretical question for now. <laughs> 
Yeah, yeah, no, perfect, perfect. Thank you. Thank it's you. it's very important to to us. We we are writing a, a paper about the the role of America, of the uh, America Latina continent, Latin American continent, as a contagious place uh, in terms of uh, this necropolitics uh, since the slavery through the the periods of independencies and now the Republican the re Republican context and democracy context. There is a long history of contamination in this, this continent. And I think that the, this notion of disorder provoked by the movement of the capital, it's, it's very, very important because uh, there is certain practices of control which are uh, established here that are not established uh, in any way in the metropolis. And this 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 role this 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 role of a laboratory a laboratory like Otavio says like you said in your paper, it's it's very very important to to our reflection. Mm. Well, but it, it's it's a it's a conversation. We don't have to continue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> a near start. Yeah, but this is what colonies were for. You know, they were places of experimentation. Yeah, and this is continuing with the overseas territories, I believe. But this has to be studied in more detail. And it seems like, you know, if you extend this perspective to the entire continent, that's even more interesting. Yeah. Uh, then I think it's like uh, two hours and four minutes <laughs> after the beginning. <laughs> so it's time to let Catherine. Uh, uh, coming back to New York Times and CNN. <laughs> and uh, I have not checked my, I... my sweet tweets here, you know. I yeah. Yes, yes, so it's a bit cruel no. for, for her, and so we are going to free to free her. And and th thank you so much. I think we, we have already say say many times, and thank you especially for for the public who was very active today and was very good to, to, to see this. And um, please come back to French yeah, Guiana. To I just need a serious invitation. <laughs> it, it's a need. Ah, okay, I, I, I'm, it's my, it's my right. job then. Okay. Uh, and and there, there is another colleague there just chatting and I, I can't turn her. Um, uh, then uh, I can just invite you to the next Copal uh, talk in two weeks because it's uh, it's a bimensual. Uh, I don't know in English, but bi something like that. Um, bi weekly, bi bi weekly bi seminar. Bi weekly, bi weekly yeah. seminar. Uh, um, in and and we are very pleased to welcome our um, colleague Claudia Trindad, ki, which is. Um, uh, an archivist from from Brazil, and we who is going uh, to to tell uh, us about uh, penitentiary archives world in, in in Brazil, and it will be a rich rich moment. And she's uh, especially based in Salvador de Bahia, and she and she drives a very rich fund fund about uh, slavery, imprisonment, and, and this subject. So, uh, a very very nice talk uh, in in two weeks, and and uh, thank you for everyone, and uh, have a good uh, afternoon night, um, depending on where you are looking at us. Bye. Thank you to. Um... The three of you and to the audience, it's too bad we cannot, we could not see everybody, but um, I really appreciated all these questions and I hope the discussion will continue. Bye-bye. Perfect. Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>